James Kaufman, World News Report, today, October 18th, 2024. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we've had two consecutive M-class solar flares. We started out at around 1736 or 1236 p.m. today with an M1.1 solar flare out of Sunspot Group. 3854. That was quickly followed by the largest solar flare we've seen in the last 72 hours plus, an M4.9 out of that same sunspot group, 3854. It peaked at 1938 or 238 p.m. Central here in the U.S. Jumping over to Space Weather Live, we see that M4.9 being the largest flare over the last 72 hours, and of course the largest flare over, well, the last 24 hours. They've downgraded it to an M4.8 on this, although they're showing M4.9 above. We today had a 10% chance of an X-class solar flare. They said we had a 60% chance of having an M-class solar flare. 3854 is no longer a Delta class sunspot group. It's beta gamma. So it's not as complex. They also said that we had a 99% chance of a C class solar flare. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've been running a C plus baseline for months now. That should be at 100%. I guess we can move the chances of having an M class solar flare today to 100% as well. Moving over to go, solar ultraviolet imager, 195 angstroms. We see our departing sunspot here with the M4.9 solar flare. We also have a small curl hole that is directly earth facing. We could see a small uptick in solar winds because of that. We're having a lot of filament activity in this area here. We'll take a look at that area in just one moment. Over to HMI Intensicram, it looks like we have eight named sunspots. It should be nine on the Earth-facing solar disk, 3854, responsible for both the M flares, is again near our departing limb, which means we may have a geomagnetic connection to that explosion, and it may be geo-affected towards Earth. Uh, again, we saw a lot of filament activity in this area here, probably from 3859, best guess. Moving over to our D-Region Absorption Prediction Center. Everyone on planet Earth is getting plenty of radiation. We're going to see the two flares here first. That's going to be our M1.1, and it peaked at. 1736 and I guess all the models are fitting together and our second one here is going to peak at 1938 and you can see it peak right there at 1938 looks like 1939 on our D region absorption prediction center so this was over parts of the US parts of South America and most of the Pacific, including Hawaii, and the one part of that was mostly over Central and South America along with the Pacific. Jumping over to STO HMI magnetogram image, we see the sunspot coming around the limb. Looks like it's reverse polarity. I don't believe it's been named yet. We can see the white over the black, positive over negative in the Southern Hemisphere. You can also see the horrific looking sunspot that produced both M flares. It's almost departing around the far limb. AR 3854. And we can see the mess here uh, where we have so many filaments moving around and popping off. 3859 here is, well, the worst looking sunspot out of the three there. And one final. Soho 284 angstroms. There's that coronal hole that's directly earth facing. 
it shouldn't be uh, that big of an uptick if we see an uptick at all in solar winds. It's a very small coral hole, but it definitely is earth facing. We can see the departing AR3854. You can see AR3859. And then look at all the sunspots coming around the limb here. We're going to quickly take a look at the back side of the sun because we've got a lot of trouble on the way. Taking a quick look at the backside composite up here, it's going to be hard for me to determine. I don't see 010, but 002 covers, well, half the backside of the sun. This is the composite here. You can see it's a day and a half old, so these sunspots should be coming around. I think we're seeing the first of them right here, which is the reverse polarity sunspot. Most of the sunspots that have been coming around the limb seem to be reverse polarity and then seem to mix up quickly into a regular polarity situation, although some become very complex. Down here we're looking at Gong and we can see these sunspot groups. They're calling it one group. It's going to be several groups after it breaks up. These look like coral holes. They are not. These are sunspots on the back side of our disk. This is what we call again gong. And this again is over a day and a half old, which means that this sunspot right here is probably the one we see coming around that has not been named as of now, as far as we know, right? So with that said, we did in fact have a joint announcement from NASA and NOAA on the 15th. And basically it says that we have reached a solar maximum, but it also says, if you read the fine print, that that can last for one to two years. So it looks like we have 12 to 24 months of, well, possible problems with our sun, and we might get a break after that. I guess time will tell. The sun is officially in solar maximum of solar cycle 25, represents from NASA, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Agency, NOAA, and the Solar Cycle Prediction Panel announced the sun has reached its solar maximum period during a teleconference with reporters on Tuesday, October 15, 2024. Again, you can hit this link and listen to the full story. But the gist of the full story is, is it's a one to two year period, i.e. the solar max of solar cycle 24. God bless. Please share. Please subscribe. Always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.